What's up, guys? Welcome, welcome. Hey, everybody. Yes. How exciting. Um, I actually haven't introed in a while, so this will be interesting. <laughs> I mean, this will be my first intro, too, I guess, on a, on, in, on TechPod. So, um, you know, this is going to be awesome. Thanks for doing the collab event as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're just going to wait for people to kind of start uh, rolling in here. Um, looks like there's already 44 people waiting, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, how, how are you guys doing? You know, how's your week been? I know it's middle of, well, almost middle of March, but yeah, like how's, how's the semester going if you're in school, if you're not in school? Um, you know, how's March going for you guys? Yeah, we're just gonna wait maybe uh, like 30 more seconds and then Andrew and I can go ahead and introduce ourselves and then we can bring on the panelists. Cool, all right. So I guess like maybe I can start off with uh, like my intro first and then we can go ahead and uh, go after. Andrew, does that sound good? Yeah, sounds perfect to me. Cool. All right. So um, just a short intro here for TechPod. Uh, TechPod is a community of students interested in the business side of tech. Um, we currently have a newsletter that where we send out weekly job listings every single week, as well as you can learn tech terminology. So if you're non-technical, um, you get to learn things like, oh, like what an API is, what what cloud means, just a bunch of cool tech terminology. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure to follow us on LinkedIn. I'm going to go ahead and leave the link in the comment section here for you guys, as well as the link to our newsletter. And I'm going to go ahead and let Andrew take it away. Yeah, so, you know, I appreciate everyone um, joining us on this evening, if you're on the east side, and um, like mentioned before, I'm Andrew. I'm the founder of uh, the National Supply Chain Foundation. Um, really, this our community is to kind of simplify supply chain and um, develop or help you learn what supply chain is and also develop you if you're already a supply chain uh, major or interested in it. So we have um, a LinkedIn, and we recently are going to transition from our MailChimp newsletters to Substack now. So I'll let Vicky um, sent some stuff in the comments as well, um, since I am not host. But here is our um, Substack newsletters that we're gonna um, basically simplify supply chain, the uh, terms, and really there's four categories such as uh, make, plan, source, and deliver. So um, if you're interested, feel free to register on that, and then uh, we can get kick this. We can start the show. Cool. Awesome. All right. So now I'm gonna. Uh, hand the mic kind of over to Andrew here for him to introduce to you guys our panelists and I'm going to bring the panelists on stage. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Vicky. And we have the panelists, these, these great individuals. Um, um, fortunately, Lauren, our third panelist, is running a little late, but she'll hop on um, when she's able to. So um, with that being said, I'll pass it off to our panelists to introduce themselves, um, and we can start with Gabe. Hey, everybody. Nice to meet you all. Um, so my name is Gabe. I went to Michigan State University, and I studied some supply chain management at the Eli Broad College of Business. And currently, I am with Microsoft, and I am a supply chain planner. Uh, with their cloud service known as Azure. And my specialty is focusing on compute servers, so servers that do computational work um, rather than like what you might normally know, like storage related servers or something that would like, let's say, store your photos. So nice to meet you all, and I'm happy to be here. Awesome. And then next we'll have Manuela. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Manuela Casillas. I am a student, a senior 
at Workers University, majoring in supply chain management and management information systems. I, in the past, interned with Amazon and Walmart e-commerce. Um, upon graduation, I will be joining Nestle USA as a supply chain, supply chain development program where I'll be doing a rotation. Um, I'm excited to be here. Awesome, thank you. And glad to see Lauren, you could make it. Yes. Um, and then we'll have you introduce yourself as well. Definitely, thanks, sorry that I'm late, um, but oh, I'm sorry. Lauren. I went to Penn State University where I studied supply chain management and Spanish. And I currently work at Apple and my role is a global supply manager. Awesome, that's great. So like you hear, you get, you guys heard, we have supply chain majors, um, student, Manuel is a student and Gabe and Lauren are um, full-term right now. Um, Manuela has interned at Amazon and Walmart e-commerce, you know, tech focused companies. And then Gabe's at Microsoft and Lauren is at Apple. So we can um, start the, the questions and just kick it off from here. So the first one that we have is, what was your pathway into tech um, tech supply chain and the biggest hurdles to kind of break into the industry? Um, and then first, you know, I'll have Lauren speak about that first and then we'll go around. Definitely. Um, so my story is a little atypical. I actually had no interest or desire to work in tech when I graduated college. Um, it just kind of worked out that way. So I, I had done consumer, the consumer industry working at Neutrogena for a co-op. And then from there, I went over to SpaceX, which was, I guess, a little more technical, but not what you would think of when you think consumer tech. Um, and then Apple was at the career fair. I decided to, to talk to them and see what it was all about. And they sold me right away. Um, the culture, I think the ownership and the ability to, to work for such a large and valuable company was what really caught my eye in the beginning. And I, I haven't looked back since. Awesome. Yeah, that's great to hear a kind of a non-traditional path. And actually one of the questions um, that we were talking about, we'll kind of talk about how you know you went from different industries to tech as well. So that's great to hear. And I forgot to mention guys, um, everyone that's tuning in right now, feel free to uh, ask questions in the, the chat box. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to kind of pull those up on the screen, but um, towards the end of our, our session, you know, at I think around 840, we'll be able to answer any of your questions live. So um, feel free to utilize that. And then um, we'll have Gabe next answer that question as well. All right, awesome. So my path was sort of straightforward. Like my previous experience was, my first internship was related to skincare, so supply chain strategy. And then after that, I went to automotive at Toyota and I did like a purchasing, uh, seats purchasing analyst, sort of a co-op position. And then after that, I had applied to Microsoft and I got the interview, did the internship, and as a result of the internship, I was extended a full-time offer. Um, I think one of the biggest hurdles that there are uh, into getting into the tech industry is definitely like, I think it really depends on the company culture. So for Microsoft, they don't necessarily, I mean, it's good to have like certain uh, skills, like let's say, and analytical skills, uh, some certain types of soft skills, but what's also really important is that you fit with the company culture. And I think that a big part of the culture of Microsoft is they think, well, like, is this person gonna fit in pretty well in the long haul? Um, are they worth the investment, right? Like maybe they don't have the skills now, but down the line, will they gain those skills? Like, will they contribute to the company? So I think it does depend on the company. Um, so I think that's something to consider when you're applying to different tech related companies, but I think that could be a pretty decent hurdle. Mm -hmm, definitely. And with the, it seems like you mentioned a bunch of like a lot of your internship experiences and your past experiences as well. Do you think those contributed to you, you know, landing a position in tech? Um, did they, those internships have anything related in tech that, that led you to that different direction? Or would you say those were just kind of to gain experience, just kind of going off? I feel like half and half. So it was relevant. Like, let's say working at, at Toyota was pretty relevant because they have the 
just-in-time processes, Lean Six Sigma processes, which are very valuable to like all sorts of companies, whether it's a tech company or a skincare company or whatever it may be. I think that might have been something that caught a recruiter's eye for sure. Um, but I, I'm, it's it's definitely hard to say. Uh, I do think like some skills are important, but it's also important to have those character characteristics that the company is looking for in a new hire. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Awesome to hear. So that's great. And then last but not least, we'll have Manuela answer um, her pathway into kind of the to the tech internships that you have. Yes, definitely. Um, supply chain. I going off to college, I wasn't intended to major in supply chain, but um, fortunately I did. Um, my pathway to uh, supply chain in tech was a little bit bumpy because um, even now I still don't know where I want to specialize, what I want to do exactly in supply chain. Um, one thing, I mean, Going off to what Gabe been saying, um, my biggest limitation or constraint was, um, you know, technical skills. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to apply for this job because I don't, I don't know if if they're gonna accept me. I don't know if I'll get an offer because I don't know R, I don't know Python. I, there is a lot of you know tech stuff that I don't know, but. In supply chain, you're not expected to go in and code and write like a hundred lines of codes. Um, they use, many companies use SAP system, ERP system and supply chain operations. And a lot of them use um, in-house systems. So they really don't need you to know all that. It might be in the job application. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it's not good to, to know certain Skills, it's really good, but your personality, um, your soft skills are really important. It is something that I didn't know. And I think it's really important to have this conversation. I wish I had someone before to have this conversation with to tell me that, you know, you can't limit yourself and be like, I have to know tech to be in a to, to work for a technical company like Apple. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily true. You really have to fit in the culture of the company. Um, I have my boss's boss when I was at Walmart. He was like, their, their operating system. He was like, I can barely sign, sign it into the system. But he was up top. He wasn't there because he knows how to write a bunch of codes. He was there because his personality matches the company's culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's just great career advice as well with, you know, not if you don't, you really don't during recruiting season, they really do look at your, your soft skills and you know, what your personality is like rather than your hard skills. Good to have um, those hard skills to kind of enable you or leverage you um, to kind of land those, but they really kind of focus on those um, personality traits, like you mentioned, Manila. So that's great to kind of hear all three of your pathways into, you know, tech supply chain and kind of the biggest hurdles as well. So um, next we'll move on to the next question which is, I know Gabe touched on this a, a little bit, is what is your most favorite thing about the culture at your company? Um, so I know Gabe, you mentioned a little bit, but do you have anything to add? We'll start with you. Sure, so uh, real quick, I see two questions. So one person asked, Marissa, she's asked if I was well-versed in computer programming skills like Tableau, R, Square, Python, et cetera. Uh, just to answer that real quick, I'm not super well versed in it, but it's extremely useful. If you know how to do SQL, how to use macros in Excel, like that'll take you quite far in the workplace, at least in my experience um, at the moment. Uh, and to answer your question, Andrew, one of my favorite things about the culture is uh, I think Microsoft has a more laid back sort of a culture. So they're not really like the traditional uh, strict sort of workplace environment, like that you don't really have to dress business casual to work. And I mean, now it's clearly work from home, so that's a little bit different, but I do feel like I can be myself more at work um, without really worrying about having to put on, I mean, you do put on your work face for sure, but you don't feel as like maybe constricted as you would in maybe another company. Uh, the other thing that I do like about Microsoft is they're very accommodating and understanding of like personal life things. So like, you know, if you're like a person, for instance, who wanted to start a family or you have like hardships going on, they're very understanding about that. And uh, 
they don't, don't really bother you as long as you get your work done. And um, they they are very understanding and accommodating when you know things might go wrong in your personal life. So mm-hmm. that's what I enjoy about Microsoft and about the tech culture. Awesome. Yeah, that's definitely great to hear. And um, it seems like we're probably going to get similar answers from Manuela and Lauren as well. But let's go. Let's. How about you, Manuela, on your Amazon internship? You know, how was the culture during that experience? Um, or if you want to talk about your Walmart e-commerce one as well, feel free to jump in on that. Yes, definitely. Just like uh, Gab just mentioned, um, it's pretty casual. Apparition is really casual. You can wear like as soon as it's not offensive to others, you cover up like a little bit. Like I mean, you you look re- representable. You can just wear whatever you want to work. And uh, um, what I really like about Amazon um, Amazon culture is their leadership principle. And as of today, I still use them in my everyday life. Um, and the, you know, um, the um, Amazon is a very big company, but it's still they still treat it as a, a startup. The day one um, phil- philosophy, the day one mentality, it kind of push you um, toward um, you know self actualization, kind of mm-hmm. push you to be the to improve. Um, supply chain is all about process improvement we're constantly improving and um the leadership um as i mentioned again you can google the 14 amazon 14 leadership principle i i still live by some of them i'm a very frugal person i am biased for action and yeah i still remember all of them they are amazing and this is one of the things that keep the company together and keep the company moving even though Amazon has so many layers in terms mm-hmm. of business models, um, this is key to the company's success, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, definitely. And with with tech companies, it seems like they always are innovative with that kind of entrepreneurial mindset. Um, even as a big company, really to have that culture is is great to hear um, as well. So uh, let's have Lauren talk about the culture at Apple. Yes, um, I echo everything that that Gabe and Manuela said. I think it's it's quite similar. Apple really prides themselves in the concept of collaboration, and that was something Steve Jobs held held true to himself and why they built that big headquarters. I'm not sure if you've seen it. Um, feel free to Google it after, but it's pretty neat. It's a it's a big sphere, and it's all glass. And the point is, you should be able to interact with anyone on any floor. Um, and the the concept of hallway conversations and how do you collaborate? How do you have conversations that make for better Apple products? Um, so I think that is really powerful and has been very, very much a learning experience for Apple through work from home, obviously, because we don't have the ability to do that like we once had. Um, but one other feature of Apple that I think is really unique, at least in San Francisco, um, there's the hub of we have Google, Facebook, Apple, Salesforce, a lot of these big companies. Apple is a little more atypical for a tech company, um, it is standard that the hours are a lot a lot more intense. And so from more of the laid back culture, I think you would get that a lot more at some of the other tech companies in San Francisco um, from what I've heard. But one thing that's really neat about Apple that is in line with those other tech companies is the benefits and the amenities, um, which are really, really amazing. The, the food offerings, the, uh, the gym, the, they shuttle us to work. So I, I live in San Francisco, which a lot of the young people do. And our work is about an hour and a half south, which sounds terrifying because that's quite a big commute every day. But they have buses that pick you up literally in your neighborhood in the city. And the buses have Wi-Fi and desks. And you can basically start working on your commute, which is a really nice perk that majority of the tech companies in San Francisco have. Mm-hmm. So all in all, I think the amenities are a huge plus compared to some of your other consumer companies out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. That's, that's great to hear and all from, from all three of you um, that you guys really enjoy your culture and it's you guys have a great fit into the company as well. So um, that's great to hear. And then uh, moving on to the, the next question that we have is um, what I, and we can start with Lauren since you've had internships in kind of these this industry as well. So the question is how do these operations and supply chain roles differ from Big tech companies versus, you know, CPG and retailers, or is it similar? Great question. Um, very different from my experience. It could be different for others, but 
The one thing that I've noticed with tech is it's a lot less political at times than it could have been. I was working for Johnson & Johnson, which is a very big consumer company, but Apple has a lot less politics um, and you have a lot more freedom and control to do whatever you need to do in your role to get your job done, which is really, really neat. Um, I think I, I can I can literally do whatever as long as I execute my my day to day. If there's other things that I want to drive, other initiatives, I can go ahead and do that. I can meet with external engineering teams um, if I want to drive something, and it'd be it'd be very easy to get things done. Um, and that was something that was very new to me. I I hadn't had that in some of my consumer internships or even at SpaceX. It was just a lot more difficult to move move that chain along as quickly as I've been able to um, at Apple. So that's, I think, mm -hmm. been the biggest difference for me. Yeah, that's great to hear. And the flexibility with the kind of the, the tech atmosphere um, definitely portrays that. So um, awesome. And then uh, Manuela, um, I guess for you, what is what were the, the differences between you know the Walmart e-commerce um, supply chain role versus the Amazon um, role? Uh, um I worked for both companies and prior to that, I also worked for Target. Um, there is like a very big difference uh, difference between this com these three companies. At Amazon, as many of you may know, Amazon is really data focused. They leverage every single piece of data they could find to constantly improve their, their, their system and um, a lot of their facilities are totally automated, um, which is different for uh, companies like Target. It's it's really a different ecosystem in terms of their tech capabilities. At Amazon, you have full visibility. Like I can be here and I can see what's going on in a in a facility. Maybe you know, in for instance, kids, for instance, Cisco or maybe in a while while I'm in New Jersey, which is very limited for, um, you know, for some of these companies, for especially Target. At the time I was at Target, it was very limited. Um, and Amazon constantly improving, constantly, you know, tackle problems, which was at the time at, at, at Target was different. Even at Walmart, Walmart is a very big company. And my experience at Amazon totally differ because of the way they use their technology to, mm -hmm. to, to, to improve. And everything is literally stay in house. They do not have that, what you call a, a third party to handle um, you know, their their operation. When you look at Amazon Logistics and Amazon Air, they have their own airplanes to, you know, for, for transportation. Those um, little vents that you vents that you see in in your neighborhood that have the Amazon sign on them, they make a difference. Handling their logistics make a difference from inside and outside. Like if you order something, I'm I'm, I'm I hate to say that because I love both companies, but if you, in a customer point of view, if you order something in Amazon, the delivery is different from if you order from, you know, some mm -hmm. other companies out there, uh, because right. the, the, the service level, the visibility that they have in the network, the from, you know, from the start, the way they trace the product, the way that they trace the operation, it's totally different. And mm -hmm. it's 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 good to see. Yeah, and and on top of that, I like to add, like the actual supply chain role is most likely similar across the board, whether you're not in a tech company or or in a different industry. But I think it's really the technology that allows you to enable it within that company, and that really um, tech companies have that innovative kind of mindset that they're open to new ideas um, easier than you know a, a CPG or a healthcare company. So. Um, yeah, appreciate Manuela and Lauren talking about that. And then Gabe, some, I'm going to switch it up on you. So we're going to ask you, you know, how does working with Microsoft Azure Cloud differ from working a more traditional area of supply chain, like a, a like a you know physical product? Sure. So kind of what you said earlier was pretty much true. Like most of supply chain is pretty much the same. Um, the only difference is that 
like every company faces different struggles based off what their product is. And like taking Microsoft, for example, with the cloud, it can be a little bit more challenging because um, cloud is still like a, a young business environment. Um, it's not like very established, like let's say uh, the automotive industry, for example. So it faces a lot of new and different challenges. And one of those challenges is like, you know, uh, the cloud service is basically a rental service. We provide um, cloud computing or storage or uh, GPU, or whatever it may be, we rent that out to customers. So if you wanted to host a website or to store data or run calculations, we rent out that service. And where the challenge can be is that you need to have a very strong understanding of like what the data what the uh, data centers are like physically, like how servers work, like how virtual machines work, how the whole entire business works. So not only do you have to understand the supply chain, but you also have to understand like the technicalities of um, like how the cloud service actually works uh, so that you can provide the best service possible to the customer. Uh, another, I guess say challenge is, is that you're always trying to have uh, maximize your efficiency. And that can be difficult to do because you have to forecast the future utilization of a server. So you have to predict how much people are gonna use your server in the future. And the reason why that can be difficult is because you wanna make sure that you keep, you know, just like any, like if you were manufacturing, like let's say machining metal, you wanna have as many of your machines running at 100% capacity as possible. And that's the same thing with like the cloud, for example, is you wanna have your servers maximized in terms of um, like how much they're being utilized. So. The trick to that is, you know, making sure that you don't have too much supply, but you also want to make sure that you don't have too little or else you won't be able to meet the customer demand. So I guess maybe that's a little bit of a challenge or how it's different than traditional supply chain. But I, mm -hmm. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, I think um, it's really about, you know, supply chain is a process and you're really focusing on the processes of something that's, you know, non physical rather than the physical one. Um, and trying to, you know, that supply and demand definitely works both in both cases. Um, and it was great to hear kind of your perspective on the differences between, you know, uh, cloud supply chain versus traditional supply chain. So awesome. Those, those questions that we were just, that I just bombarded you with were a lot of, were a lot focused on, you know, your specific company, but now we'll kind of transition to um, more career focused ones. So um, the next one we have is what skills do you need to get hired as an operations or supply chain intern or entry um, full-time role? So um, kind of the skills I think we'll have Gabe start us off. Sure. So some skills. Uh, I think something that's definitely useful to have is um, someone in the comments said it earlier but soft skills are very important. So like how you interact with people, like one of the things for sure is um, in tech, it's kind of like a rapid prototyping sort of environment. So a lot of times you're gonna have to have these soft skills of project management where you're going to need to make an impact, right? in the company and what you're gonna need to do is get people to buy into your idea. Like, hey, I believe this needs to be improved and here's why. And you have to kind of sell people on that idea and get them to support it so that you can make an impact. So that's like one thing that's really difficult to do um, is to really drive the point that like this opportunity area for improvement is something that's worth investing your valuable time in, especially when everyone is so split across like, tasks on the day to day. Um, another one that's quite useful in terms of skills is definitely knowing how to use SQL Power BI and be very good at um, Excel, so macros, VBA, because you're gonna definitely need to, you're gonna have like a lot of data coming at you no matter where you work, especially if you're in tech and you're gonna need to support those decisions um, with your own analysis, uh, because we're not making decisions based on gut feeling here, it's all data driven. So that's definitely another valuable skill to have. Um, although it's not necessarily necessary as these skills can be taught or learned throughout time. So I think the soft skills are definitely like quite important, but the uh, hard skills, analytical skills are also important as well. So if you have both, you're going to be good to go most likely. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think Gabe hit it on the head there. Um, but we'll like Manuela, do you have anything to add about kind of what skills um, you need to you know land in operations or supply chain um, role? Yes, I totally agree with Gabe. Um, it's a mixture of both, honestly. Um, for for an internship, you don't really need to know, you know, um, SQL. Uh, as soon as you know Excel, it's you you know pivot table and like certain cool feature of data analysis in Excel. It's it's a it's really it's important. It's crucial because your project they will probably make you work on a process improvement project, and you will definitely definitely need to use data whatever the project that you're doing it can be about you know employee satisfaction you will need data to to um, quantitative and qualitative data to to come up with a, a solution um it's a mixture of both for me and especially in my walmart internship i needed you know um interpersonal skills the the ability to talk with people because um an open mind because i'm not from there i'm an intern i'm here for a couple of days i needed to talk to people to know what's going on it was my first internship in supply chain i needed to you know to interact with people and speak their language and um get what i needed to do my job mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome to hear um, and then last but not least, Lauren, I hope I hope they didn't steal your, your answers to this question, but um, how about you? What kind of skills do you think a student or, you know, someone looking for a full-time role um, should be kind of aiming towards to, to, to land that supply chain role? Yeah, I think it's, it's really everything that they covered. The ability to use Excel, Tableau is a perk, SQL. Um, but then I think it goes back to the, the first answer that, that we went over, which was the soft skills and just the ability the ability and the eagerness to learn and showing that when you're interviewing, I think is really important. As an intern, especially, they know you're not gonna know everything about the company and, and know how to do your role, but that's why they hire you as an intern to teach you and then hopefully turn that into full-time. So I think just really being eager and when you're in that internship, completely unafraid to ask questions and, and ask all of the, you know, everyone says no question is a dumb question, but accepting that and really just full force asking what you need to get your job done um, that's always what I've done in internships. And I think the result always turns out pretty well. And the feedback is always like, we appreciated how eager you were to learn. Um, and I think that's something that is really important um, because that's the, that's the fastest way you're, you're going to, you're going to learn about a company. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That, that's great advice. And answering the, definitely asking those questions um, in the beginning to help you kind of um, break the ice there as well. So um, that's great. And um, one real thing, one, uh, off the kind of that that came to that came to my mind was you know with in transitioning from soft skills to your hard skills did you guys all have you know programming um, software skills like Tableau or R Square Python um, SQL or, or did you guys kind of learn that on the spot um, if anyone wants to to take this one sure I uh, man I'm learning on the spot right now to be honest like. Uh, I did what, a 12 week internship uh, at Microsoft initially, and it was completely project management oriented. And now I'm doing capacity planning and I have to do a lot of stuff, like a lot of different analysis, handling data. So I'm putting in those long hours nowadays to learn those skills on my own free time. So I say, if you can get started on it now, you're going to have to use it eventually. And even if you're not going to use it immediately, like that's just the trend of how business is going anyway. So it'll be useful to have those skills. Um, I can't say necessarily which one you're going to need per company. It depends on what they use. Um, some companies use, what, what is it called? SAP. Uh, some companies don't. So it really depends, but you can't really go wrong with learning any of those skills. Cause once you learn one sort of, uh, let's say programming language, it's going to be a lot easier to pick up other ones. So I'd say just, Get started with whatever you can right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Awesome, yeah. Glad that you're you're learning those languages now to to help you. But um, definitely would have been helpful to have in the beginning, you know, in college as well. So great to hear. How about Lauren? Do you have anything to add? 
Yeah, it was very similar. I think you just get thrown into the fire and it's sink or swim. You have to you have to figure it out or you're not going to make it. Um, mm -hmm. I was that way with Tableau and Ultrix and a little bit of SQL as well. They needed something and they needed it fast and I needed to learn on the spot. Um, and obviously it, it's hard, but once you pick it up, it's a great skill to have. And I think it speaks volumes that you were able to, to teach yourself something while, you know, while having a professional career. It's pretty, it's pretty normal, but definitely recommend to, to dive deeper if you can while you're in school. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Awesome. And then Manuela, anything um, to add on that? Yes. Um, when I was at Walmart, I had to learn in the spot because their system is uh, um, the system that we use in our non sortable building is the system it, at home. Like it's not, you know, a third party. It's not something that you can learn outside. Someone inside of the building has to teach you how to use it, uh, which was really interesting. And I was like following everybody around me like, Talking them like, can you help me with this? Can you mm -hmm. teach me this? You know, don't be afraid to to ask people to 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 teach you something because they are more than happy to help you, even though sometimes they are busy. But a lot of the people they are happy to help you. And uh, um, after my internship, I was like, oh my gosh, I needed something. This is when I decided to double major in management information systems, um, where I get you know some basic Python and um, some basic uh, R. I, I still use R for my my own, you know, you, you don't specifically, I would say it's nice to have certain skills because you don't specifically have to use it at work. You can use it for your own good, for your own, you know, activities that you're doing. Right now mm -hmm. I use R because of the market volatility and I can do some analysis. I can download some some data from Yahoo Finance and um, I, can, I can look at data and see how things are going in the market, which is pretty cool, you know? um mm -hmm. if you can learn something just go for it yeah and to kind of to sum it up it seems like um all three of our, our panelists really didn't have an expert understanding of these you know technical skills um throughout college but you know it's all about that self-learning and learning on the spot learning fast um learning from your mistakes and when you're on the job to get these technical skills that can kind of help you leverage your day-to-day -day activity so um that's great and then one more question before we start answering the um, questions from the comment section is, you know, how much or how can students break into entry level positions at a big tech company um, without going through the internship pipeline, um, which is pretty tough because most of those, you know, have on the job posting, it says like three, you know, three to years of experience um, or a lot of the technical um, skills you need. So um, any advice on, on that? And um I think this is an open-ended question for anyone that, that wants to answer this one. Sure. I think, honestly, most, I don't know, man, you just got to apply and cross your fingers. That's all, that's <laughs> all I can say about it because it just depends on you. You know what I mean? Like it could be skills. It could be your soft skills, hard skills, whatever it is, or it could be your personality. And I'd say don't talk yourself down and be like, Oh, I don't have four years of experience and I don't know how to use like these database systems. Like just apply, man. Like there's a good shot that you, you could be the person who gets in. And like, I didn't think I was going to get in initially and like, here I am. So, you know, what's the worst that can happen sending in the application? You know, they could just say no, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I yeah. agree. I, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. I can I can build up from what uh, Gab just said. I totally agree with that. Um, yes, we are fresh out of college, especially with what's going on with COVID. A lot of us didn't have an internship, uh, maybe in, in our junior year or whatever. So um, it's important to, um, my mother always tell me, if you'll never know the answer unless you ask. It's always important to go for it, apply for, for the job that you you think you you like and you think you'll be a good fit for, because it's kind of surprising. Um, a personal story of mine is that last, around this time last year, I applied for an entry level uh, techno, technical uh, support. It, it's not a technical support, but it's in the tech field. It's like technical consulting um, position at one of the big four, you know? 
it's it's challenging to to get in these companies as well just like tech so um i just i just went with with my gut i was like okay i'm just gonna apply i was kind of bored as well i apply <laughs> and <laughs> i got i got an interview and i was like what i had an interview and i was like okay i can't go to the interview because i was still working for amazon at the time they were willing to reschedule with me they rescheduled and i went for an interview oh my gosh i brought my personality i bought my me you know i went with me so and when i went there they loved me they loved me they actually gave me an offer but i didn't take it i didn't take it because i i, I had another offer that mostly aligned with my long-term goals so um it's, it's just a story that I'm sharing with you about me to tell you, you are your own enemy. So don't let fears or rejection, and I, I got rejected a lot. Don't let that bring you down. Keep going, keep pushing, and you get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely well said, Manuela. Um, and great to hear about that, that story. Um, and then Lauren? That, that was so motivational. I'm not sure if I could call up with anything. <laughs> Um, no, that was that was very well said, and I totally agree. Another, I, I won't um, go over what they already said, but another tip I think is LinkedIn. Apple really likes to recruit via LinkedIn, which is really interesting, and they actually they'll prefer to recruit you. So one piece of advice would just be have your LinkedIn up to date. I have several friends now at Apple that were working in nothing related to tech, um, and it wasn't right out of school, but they had, you know, maybe six months to a year of experience within consumer or someone was at Under Armour, for example, and Apple recruited them even with with no tech experience and, and they came right over just through LinkedIn. So I think that's an interesting way. Um, and also just searching for people through LinkedIn. I'm sure both of you have have received messages before just from being at Microsoft, for example, or Amazon, where people will um, will just message you and, and try to meet with you and Every now and then when I'm not super busy, I will meet with people that, that do reach out and will always try to internally refer them if I'm able to. So I think there are different tips and tricks for getting in um, if you can't make it through that initial application process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely um, well said with the non-traditional way of, of networking, right? And kind of reaching out to um, someone in that position or role. Um, and that brings to the point of like, how much networking did you guys have to do to break into the industry? Um, or if you guys did any networking at all. Um, and I think, Gabe, you wanna uh, answer that question? If you you know had any networking calls with um, people at Microsoft or how did that? How did you leverage that connection to, to land that position? I honestly, I'll be completely honest. Like I'm, I know for a fact networking will help and it will, I mean, your network can take you really far, but I absolutely had zero network in my personal experience. Um, it was just a, it was just like an apply and see if you get in type situation. But if you know people like that can definitely help a lot. I, I know just from a lot of people I went to school with or people who are my colleagues, like connections are everything for sure. So I think if you can, honestly, there's no disadvantage to networking, like build your network as much as possible. Awesome. Yeah, that's great to hear. And then I think Lauren might have be having some technical um, difficulties, but Manuela, um, you know, how did you leverage networking to kind of break into the industry? And after this question, we'll kind of go down the list of the comments and, and answer everyone's, um, or answer most of your guys' questions in the, the comment section, but um, yeah. Um, honestly, I think networking is great. It's good to know people, um, but, to be totally honest, just like Gabe, I did not get my job, my internship through networking, um, but I got my current job, my future current job through networking because um, I'm part, you know, it's, it's important to be um, involved in you, your school activities uh, because you will get opportunities there that you will not get outside sometimes. Uh, but to be frank, networking is, again, very important. I have people that that are in my network. Before an interview, I go to them and I'm like, do you have five, 10 minutes? And just go over a certain question with me. And 
a lot of these people also kind of helped me build my confidence because they've been there they did that before and if they tell me it, it kind of it's really helpful to have them you know tell me that oh you're good to go i think you're gonna crush it um it's kind of boost your confidence level it's good to, to to go around and talk to people but honestly i i did not do that much networking besides leveraging um linkedin i don't have time to go to even that much i only leverage linkedin which is pretty cool mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's great to hear. Um, and then uh, thank you for answering those questions um, for our panelists. And then we'll kind of get into the comments um, to see what the um, attendees want to hear from you guys. So the first one that um, is specific to Lauren um, from Taylor Wade is, you know, can you tell us more about what a global supply manager does at Apple? Um, and kind of what does your day-to-day -day look like? Definitely. Um, so the global supply manager role is really neat. In a typical company in supply chain, you have separate roles. You have capacity planning, demand planning, supply planning, supplier relations, um, and it's, it's oftentimes a completely separate team. But as a GSM at Apple, you actually do everything. So you're given a part or a set of parts in the phone or the watch or whatever the product is, and then you're entirely responsible for making sure your suppliers are producing those parts, you're forecasting correctly, they're supplying exactly what you need uh, to the quality level that you expect for an Apple part. So I think that's part of the reason I, I really wanted to get into this role as much as I did was because I was going to get a lot of that experience in one role versus having to to swap and, and move in and out of other roles. Um, so it's it's been really neat. And one, one thing just to pipe in here because I didn't get to say it earlier, but one really neat thing about Apple specifically is how much they value supply chain. Um, so Tim Cook, the CEO, he actually came out of the supply chain organization. And so what's really neat about that is cost and efficiencies and the relationships with suppliers are at the forefront of a lot of the conversations, even in reviews with engineering and product design, um, where oftentimes in some tech companies, the design or the engineering teams have full control and supply chain falls to the backside. That's not the case at Apple. Um, and I think it, it stemmed from Tim Cook and, and where he came out of, but it's been a really valuable experience to have leadership that really backs the supply chain as, as a key prominent aspect of, of getting a product to a consumer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for, for answering that that day-to-day -day question and also shouting out uh, Tim Cook <laughs> for the, the supply chain background, which is always great to have. Um, and then, um, and then coming from the comments again, one question from Tony Fields is kind of what is a good starting point? So I'm assuming, you know, say a individual is looking to break into supply chain. Um, they have no experience in supply chain as well. Like what would be a good starting point you'd say to help them get into, get their foot into their supply chain and then kind of get their foot into the tech supply chain. Um, and this is open-ended as well. If anyone needs to has any comments about this question, feel free to um, answer. Yeah, I can take that. If you're still in college, I would say a good point entry will be um, internship. Because uh, while I was at Amazon, I was interning and one of my colleagues was a site major. So totally far away. Um, but she, she had, you know, interest in supply chain, she decided to go for that internship. And I think the internship, she learned a lot doing the internship and that will definitely help her down the road. Yeah, definitely those internships um, will help you gain real life experience. Um, and it seems like you don't need a supply chain background to, to land those internships as long as you have that personality and if you fit with the culture like we've been talking before. So um, definitely shoot your shot um, as a good starting point. Um, and we'll, we'll stay on this question if anyone, if Gabe or Lauren has anything uh, to comment on kind of breaking to supply chain if their background isn't in supply chain. Yeah, I think one interesting thing with Apple is a lot of the people that I work with in the supply chain department have no supply chain background at all. Um, and they were brought in with oftentimes some sort of business background. A lot come from their MBAs um, or just business in general, but I 
obviously it, it might not be as well suited if you had a, a psychology degree or something of that sort, but even if you're ma you majored in finance or economics, there's still an opportunity to, to enter into the supply chain. And I think part of that being supply chain is just a very realistic role. And a lot of times it's just, how do you get something from point A to point B? And it's pretty um, applicable to our day-to-day -day lives. So it can, obviously there are technical skills that you need to learn, but it can be pretty, pretty quickly learned, um, which is an exciting thing about the career in general. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that. And then Gabe, anything else to add? Uh, I don't know if I could add anything else to those two great responses that we already have, but mm -hmm. uh, I pretty much I second almost everything they said. Like a lot of my colleagues, some of them did have supply chain backgrounds. Some of them didn't. Some of them were other business fields. Some people uh, were even like previously had their experience in the Navy or like for the last 12 years. Like mm -hmm. it really, you know, <laughs> you could really have any sort of background. I think you could, you could pick up supply chain uh, for yeah. sure. So, yeah. yeah and, and, and to go off that, it seems like, you know, whatever company you do work for, um, a lot of the supply chain upper level executives really didn't have that supply chain background, right? Um, like we were talking before, it's really about, you know, learning on the spot and kind of um, being able to pivot um, and kind of do your due diligence and, and teach yourself um, while also kind of having those experiences that you you work with, you know, on a day-to-day -day, um, uh, atmosphere. So yeah, that's great. And then one more question before we finish off the night with kind of housekeeping items. This question is from Tariff. Um, he says, hey, y'all, it's really important for me to be with a company that recognizes me and my work. Do you feel like you get that recognition at work from your company? So um, I guess, Manuela, do you want to start off with, you know, that Amazon internship? Yes, definitely. Um, while I was there, I think um, working on my project and being virtual in a virtual environment, I really felt valued. I really felt that um, they they appreciate what I was doing because I had uh, the facility that I was working for. I ha we had the um, the senior person there, the general manager, coming in the call with us uh, for a presentation. You know, giving us real time feedback, honest feedback. So um, I, I really felt valued there. I really felt that I was making a difference. And um, another thing is right now, I, I still keep in touch with um, the person that was my supervisor. And he informed me that, I, that they currently implementing my project, which, which is pretty cool. So this is, I, I mean, I don't know if people see value the same way I see it but this kind of make me feel good and they still keeping in touch with me telling me oh you did a great job and the team recognized that and um based on what I heard from other people from people that I work with during my internship Amazon really valued their customers same thing for Walmart the value is there and one way they show you that they value your work is the same as every company's is through promotion calling you and giving you feedback telling you what's working and what's not working and give you the the, the promotion in every other merit mm -hmm. yeah that's amazing to hear that your project is is still lasting and, and kind of moving forward and that's great recognition um from amazon as well um, and then uh, anything else to add from Gabe or Lauren about kind of recognition at work? Um, if not, we can kind of um, call it a night and, and do some housekeeping items, but um, we'd love to hear from you too. Sure, I can go. Um, same way for Apple. I think one of my biggest concerns when, when taking the role at Apple was that I wouldn't feel recognized given that it is such a big company and there's so many parts and such a big organization but uh, it doesn't feel like that at all. I think every team is relatively small. The, the managers do a really good job of setting up quarterly career path discussions to make sure that you're on the trajectory that you'd like for your career and how they can assist with changing that if necessary, which I think is really valuable. Um, and then 
back to what Manuela was saying, there's always recognition. Um, they, they take care of you financially, which always helps. But um, just also emotionally, I think it it might be the culture as well, given that it's tech and it's a lot more laid back. But it's a lot it's a lot easier to be transparent with my manager and just say it like it is when I'm frustrated with something or when I'm when I'm happy about something. And I think it's really important to have that relationship, whether it be your your manager or someone else within your company, so that you can feel valued and and like someone is listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well said, Lauren. Um, yeah, and then I think that we can call it a night there and, and wrap up. Really appreciate you guys, the panelists, taking the time to to hop on a call um, and kind of give your advice and answering all these questions that came in. So um, if Vicky want, comes, wants to come back from TechPod and kind of wrap things up, um, as well as I think if the panelists want to drop your LinkedIn or social media um, in the private chat, and then I think Vicky can kind of put that in the comments as well. So feel free to do that. Yes, absolutely. Um, go ahead and drop your LinkedIn's or whatever you would like me to send in the chat in the private chat and I can go ahead and send it over to our viewers. But yeah, thank you guys so much for participating in this. And of course, thank you so much, Andrew and NSCF for hosting this. Um, this was a wonderful event and I actually learned a lot about supply chain. Um, I haven't really like like looked into it, but it seems like a very interesting field. And, and I'll, the LinkedIn's are dropped and I'll also drop the National Supply Chain Foundation LinkedIn um, page as well. Feel free to follow that, stay up to date on our events. Um, partnerships such as these and also our tech our, our um, substack newsletter um, for information as well so again thank you to the panelists and it was a great night to hear um, all about your experiences and your advice thank you andrew appreciate you having me on man no problem thanks so much thanks guys and thank you TechBot, for for having this partnership collaboration event as well of course yeah all thank the links so much, everyone and like, just uh if you guys want to reach out to them make sure to do so and yeah that's it guys have a great and wonderful rest of your night yeah bye guys bye, bye.